So what's going on everybody? So it's Thursday night and um, I wanted to talk about Hawks. So uh, this is for people that are new. Um, maybe even if you're, your experience with birds, you don't know a whole lot about Hawks. Um, we've had a good deal of run-ins with them, with the chickens and uh, hasn't always ended with good news for us. But um, for anybody new to this or anybody who lives in the New Jersey area or I guess in anywhere where the, the climate's like this, hawks are the worst in the winter. November to March, they're ruthless. They don't migrate, they, they stay around all winter but most of their food does migrate, especially Cooper's hawks and other types of hawks that primarily feed on, on other birds. Um, a lot of the birds that they eat migrate for the winter, so their food source is scarce. So they get hungry and they get desperate. Um, a lot of times when you have a hawk that is being very desperate or very ballsy, it is a young hawk. Um, a hawk very rarely survives through its first winter. So if you have a hawk, a Cooper's hawk, that's showing up every day trying to get your pigeons, he's he just won't quit, that's likely a hawk that's less than a year old, and this is its first winter. And if it's sad to say, but sometimes them getting your pigeons, or like when they got my chickens, that was probably make or break for that animal. Um, so it's it's not personal. They're they're not out to get you. They're they're just trying to survive. And pigeons are prey. So I I, I do what I can to avoid it. Um, I stop flying these guys come November. I'm not gonna fly them until March just to try and avoid it. But even then, if a, if a hawk goes after them, he's He's just trying to survive. So some things about hawks and also why they're particularly bad this time of year is there's no leaves on the trees. So a hawk's just gonna perch up there and he's got a wide open view of everything. He can see your birds from a long way off and he's gonna watch them. He has probably been watching your bird for days before he went after them. They're a very smart animal. They are calculative and they pick their points of attack. They're an ambush predator. They are very rarely gonna go after your birds in flight. Um, pigeons can usually outrun them unless it's uh, like a falcon or a peregrine falcon coming from above. But in terms of the Cooper's hawks, they are very rarely gonna go after your birds when your birds are flying. They're gonna wait for your birds to be coming back or taking off, landing on your roof, that's when they're gonna strike. That's when your birds are vulnerable. So if you're gonna fly your birds in the winter or really any time of year, you really shouldn't have them just dilly-dallying outside. You really don't want them just walking around on your roof, especially in the winter. And coming in, you know, get them off the landing platform and back in your loft as, as quickly as you can because that's when the hawk's gonna go after them. That's when they're the easiest. Uh, the other thing about hawks is they're studying you. They are, they're really learning your habits. So if you let your birds out, let's say every day at 9 a.m., that hawk is gonna be waiting in the tree every day at 8.45 a.m. And the moment your birds come out of that loft, he's gonna go right after them. So you have to change up a lot of things. You have to throw them off. They are smarter than your pigeons are. Um, our pigeons are smart. They have, you know, great homing abilities and they, you know, they're easily trained and educated, but hawks are just as easily trainable as the pigeons. I mean, you've seen falconers, they train them to hunt and to listen and to respond and it's, it's the same principle. So a wild hawk is gonna learn your patterns and your habits just as much as you're trying to learn his. So. You know, it's, it's tough because you want to start training young birds on a routine. You want to do things the same time every day and get them in a routine. And then by the time your pigeons are in a routine, the hawk has learned your routine and he's coming. So definitely don't fly them in the winter if you can avoid it. That's just asking for, for bad news. They're just, they're just trying to survive the winter. Winter's hard on them. So in the spring, summer, fall, when they have plenty of food out there, 
you know, yeah, they'll, they'll probably go after your pigeons, but it's gonna be less frequent than it is in the winter. In the winter, they're gonna show up every day. Literally every day, they're gonna be waiting for you. Um, the other thing about hawks is some deterrent ideas. So I've seen guys use those wacky inflatable arm men that wave around and, and scare hawks away. And I've heard good things about those. Um, the only thing about those is, is you have to train your pigeons to not be scared of them and get your pigeons used to ignoring those. And then when your birds are up flying, start blowing that, that thing around. And that should hopefully prevent the hawks from attacking your birds in your yard when they're coming back to land or taking off. Um, they have these, I will call them similar to disco balls. They're like metallic spirals that you could hang in the trees and they're supposed to reflect light and hawks don't like that. Um, I don't know how well they work. I've never tried them myself, but, um, the reviews said they worked. So, so who knows? Uh, another big thing is so if you want to deter hawks, a lot of people don't like it, don't like them, but attract crows to your yard. If you start making friends with the neighborhood crows and you start feeding the crows in your neighborhood and get them to start calling your yard home, the hawks aren't gonna come. The crows hate hawks. They will relentlessly go after them until the hawks leave. So if you wanna go that route and start making friends with the neighborhood crows, you could just build a flat platform and just start putting peanuts on it, like whole peanuts. Um, crows love peanuts, they love corn. Uh, I think popcorn is a uh, is a big thing with crows. So crows are, are a good deterrent for hawks. Um, fortunately for us, you know, we still have the problems with the hawks from time to time, but we have a pine tree a couple houses away where the crows have nests. So in the spring and the summer, they just fly back and forth from that pine tree to the trees in my backyard. They like use my backyard as the, the lookout point and then they just go after hawks. So we're pretty good in the summer with the crows helping out. Another thing I've seen online of what people do for hawks is they play this, they play the sounds of crows on a speaker. Like if you have an Alexa or a Bluetooth speaker and you bring it outside when your birds are flying, you know, play the sound of the crows, I guess, pretty loudly. And hawks know crows mean bad news. I mean, I'm sure you've all seen the crows going after the hawks. So give that a try if, if, if you don't have, um, if you need something in a pinch. You know, everybody has an Alexa or a Bluetooth speaker these days. So try playing the sound of crows and seeing if that works. But yeah, hawks in the winter, especially in New Jersey, they're just bad. They're bad, they, they got a lot of balls. Um, we had a, a hawk this morning, a uh, Cooper's hawk did his flyby of the chickens. Um, we have avian netting over, over the chickens, so he can't get them. But I know that's a young Cooper's hawk. This is his first winter. He's not even a year old yet. Um, and the reason I know that is because he's, he made a run at the chickens. And we have two big roosters. They're much bigger than a Cooper's hawk. And we have a, a Tom Turkey who's probably 30 pounds. Uh, he's giant too, and those three guys, they are not friendly to things that are trying to harm their, their girlfriends. Um, one of my roosters could probably beat up a Cooper's hawk on his own. I, they're, 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 they're big boys, and when they get angry, they get angry. Uh, and we have the two roosters and, and the boy turkey, so um, for the hawk to be trying to get through the avian netting with those three out there, he's starving. It's, it's, that's what it comes down to in the winter. That's why they're, they're extra aggressive and extra willing to take chances and go after your birds with you standing right there. So the best course of action in New Jersey, I would say is stop flying your birds from November to, <clears throat> to March. Once the, the migratory birds come back and they have plenty of food and the chipmunks start coming out again and the rabbits are out and about and just all the little animals that they, they like to eat are around, they're not gonna be as willing to go after a, a healthy fast pigeon. And also the other thing is, I've heard that hawks, uh, white pigeons are hawk bait and maybe, I don't know if I believe that to a degree. I think that if you have a few white pigeons in a flock of 30 darker colored birds, then your white pigeons are easier to pick out because a hawk is gonna pick out a single target. He's not gonna go aimlessly at 
30 pigeons and hope for the best. He's been sitting there watching them and he picked one out, whether he noticed one is flying slower, one is is doesn't seem as in as like it's keeping up with the rest of them, one seems like it's sluggish. The hawk's gonna single that bird out. They can see the weakness a mile away. <clears throat> and if you have, you know, a flock of 30 white pigeons and one blue bar in there, the blue bar is gonna stand out and that's who the hawk is gonna go after. So you have a mixed flock of all different colors. There's really no rhyme or reason for why that hawk selected your bird other than maybe maybe your bird is molting and it's it's not flying as strongly as the others. The hawk's going to see that weakness. He's going to go after them. Maybe the bird's sick. I, you know, something you didn't notice, but that's what hawks are, are meant to do. They're meant to notice weaknesses in their prey and target the weak and have an easier meal. So the tips and tricks are the wacky inflatable arm man. Those are those are kind of expensive, but um, I'd imagine they work very well, especially like in your vicinity of your loft. Um, reflective things you can hang from the trees to keep hawks away. Uh, playing the sounds of crows over a Bluetooth speaker or trying to attract crows to your yard and have them chase the hawks away. Other than that, um, I've said this in the past, but hawks are federally protected. You can't harm them, you can't harass them, and you can't kill them. If you get caught, it's it's a big fine and you get in a lot of trouble, um, unless you're a falconer and then you can trap them, I guess, and, and do what needs to be done. Um, another thing you can try is if the hawks are in the tree, I mean, start watching your birds, you know, shoot some bottle rockets up in the air and hope maybe that'll scare them away and let them know your yard is, you know, not safe. But remember, if your pigeons can get used to it, the hawk can get used to it. So you got to change up your tactics to keep them away. And, uh, hope this helps anybody with, uh, dealing with hawks. Um, if you are... Just, just stop letting your birds out. It's, it's February already. You got a, a month, month and a week or two to go, and then they're not going to be as bad. So stop flying them now for the next month. Uh, let the hawks learn your areas not, not for sale. There's no uh, food available, and they'll eventually move on. That's the other thing too. If you have a hawk attack, you know, don't let your bird out, birds out for a couple of days. Um, let the pigeons settle down and let the hawk move on. If he goes after them on Monday, he's coming back Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and if he can't get them Friday, he's, he's gonna be looking elsewhere for food because they can't go forever without eating, and they're gonna learn eventually they can't get your birds, and they'll move on. But all right, guys, uh, that's this Thursday's video. I uh, hope it helps anybody, and uh, again, please like, subscribe, and uh, drop me a comment, and I'll talk to you guys later.